I'm Sherry Hobb, and I'm here to demonstrate how to use the E3 Duo controller for both electroforming and etching. And this would be electrical etching. So what's great about this little controller is it has two distinct programs built inside. It's great for the home studio because it's small and compact, and it takes the place of a large rectifier, um, which can be bulky and difficult to use. So let me show you a little bit about this machine. Let me show you the, the inside in case you're interested. Here's the controller, and this has a microprocessor with two distinct programs inside. So it's quite, quite complex, and it's really neat because it controls both power and current depending on the process that you're using it for. I'm going to demonstrate both processes of both electroforming and etching. And first of all, we'll get started with electroforming, which is plating copper onto an object. And um, you can electroform onto stones, organic objects, plastic items. The sky's the limit. And so it's really um, a great way to make jewelry. And I'm going to use copper, although you can use other metals to plate as well. For electroforming, make sure that you have the switch on the top to the e-form side for electroforming or plating. And then you will see that the green light indicates that the power is on. And then red light is for current when you have your piece set up. And I'll explain that in just a moment. So turn that on. And then this controller has a range from 40 milliamps up to two amps, depending on the size of the piece that you're plating or if you're doing multiples, you'll want to use a higher uh, current setting. And what's really great is you don't have to think about setting that manually. It will control a constant current depending on the um, setting that you use which, by simply just turning the dial up or down depending on what you want to use. So I've got a piece in progress here. And to start, you want to make sure that if you have an organic object like this, that it's sealed really well with a varnish to keep all the organic matter from seeping into the solution. And then I've painted it with a conductive paint, such as this graphite paint, to the surface, which will make it plate wherever the conductive paint is. So I've got that piece here. And I'm just using a copper plating solution. And then in the beaker, I've got um, copper. It could be a copper coil or scraps of copper with the solution. I've got my clips attached. And you can see I have a piece in progress right here. I've wrapped a copper wire around the piece. And you can see where it's copper plating wherever I had the conductive paint. And you can let that go. I usually start our controller a little bit higher than I need it to be, depending on the size of the piece. And then as soon as I have a good um, a good layer of copper on the piece, I turn it down and let it go um, a long time, like from 2 to 12 hours, depending on how thick I want to plate the piece, on a very low current setting. As a general rule of thumb, you want to use about 100 milliamps per square inch of surface area. So you want to look at your piece and and judge you know, what that area is like. It doesn't have to be exact, but that'll help you to have a good guide for where to set your machine. So in order to do multiples, what you can do is instead of using a small beaker like this, you can use a larger vessel with a copper wire across the top, and you can hang multiple pieces across the rod, such as these, and then surround them with copper, either copper wire or copper scraps like this, and then fill it with solution, and then you can accommodate a, a large number of pieces. Now with our controller, two amps will allow you to do about 10 to 12 small charms, such as the size in this little skull here. So you can do about 12 of those at once if you've set things up properly and you wanna make sure that these aren't touching each other and that you use the um, appropriate uh, current for how many pieces you're wanting to plate. You can also use the Duo controller to plate other metals such as gold, silver, and other appropriate metals as long as you use the proper solution. So I've got a leaf that's been gold plated here and these um, only take a few minutes. So what you're going to do 
is instead of using a copper anode, you're going to use the appropriate anode that goes with your solution. And in this case, I've got a stainless steel anode that works well with a 14 karat gold solution. And you use the solution, and this only takes a few minutes or is directed by the bottle. And you wanna keep your current on a very low setting when plating with these metals, as well as follow the directions from the manufacturer about agitation or heat as necessary. To use the E3 Duo for etching, make sure that you have the etch selected above on this switch up here. And then you'll have three settings down on this knob here. You've got one through three, one, two, and three. And I use three for most of my projects and especially for copper and larger pieces because it'll etch uh, fairly quickly and delivers uh, more power than the two and the one. I use a setting one if I'm etching on silver, which etches a lot faster than copper. So you can adjust this dial as needed. And with this controller, you can etch a piece of metal about the size of a eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper using a larger stainless steel vessel. And that's about the limit of the, the size that you would wanna go with this little controller here. Okay, so I've got a piece in progress here. And to prepare this piece, what I start out with is some copper. And in this solution, I've got an electrolyte of copper sulfate and distilled water, and that works on copper, brass, and bronze. So to prepare this copper piece, I make sure that I sand the surface really well, and then I need to apply a resist. And what a resist is, is that's going to be something that blocks the etching from happening. And in other words, it masks the metal. And one resist that we use commonly is a toner. And this is just black toner on a black and white copier printed on paper. And then we iron this onto our metal. And here's a piece where I've got some ironed on the surface. And the etching will occur wherever you see copper, but wherever the black toner is applied, it will not etch. And so that's a great and easy way to apply a resist. You can also use UV film, which we really like. UV film gives you a lot of control and perfection for really fine lines. It stays on very well without flaking off during the etching process. And this won't come off until you take it off. So you can get some deep etching with that resist. And there's more information on our site of how to use that one. You can also use an oil-based paint pen or stickers or nail polish as a resist. Those work great too. So when you're ready to, um, when you've got your resist on and you're ready to etch, you simply attach an aluminum wire to your piece. And this aluminum wire is coated and that helps to protect the wire and keep it from breaking. And then also any little fractures that might occur um, sometimes build up current and that red, that red coating helps to protect that but you could use a regular aluminum wire and um, cut a new piece if you damage one for copper, brass, and bronze. But for silver, uh, sterling silver or fine silver, then you always wanna make sure that your wire is coated because the aluminum will interfere with the solution while you're etching. And so I've just clipped that on and make sure that you've got your um, other black clip to a stainless steel pan and make sure that the copper isn't touching the sides of the pan or that these clips aren't touching each other. And you set the appropriate um, level of current that you'd like. And then you just wait a few hours. Generally, the pieces take two to three hours for a piece of copper to etch. Now, something that's really uh, neat about this controller is that it sends feedback to the piece. It knows if it's got a small piece or a large piece and it will self-regulate how much power to send to the piece so that you get consistent even etching every time. And you'll note that with electrical etching, the etching can be very deep and you don't get as, as um, much of an undercut that you would get with chemical etching. So it's great in that way that the electricity does a nice, clean, smooth etch. Aside from copper, brass, and bronze, you can also use the controller to etch on sterling and fine silver. And I like to use copper nitrate to etch on sterling silver. And then I like to use silver nitrate 
to etch on fine silver, and you can find more information and more details under the Learn tab on our website. After you're through etching, you can simply unclip the, um, the lead and then rinse off your piece and you're ready to go to make some fabulous jewelry. Thanks for watching. For more information, visit our website at sherryhob.com and especially check out our Learn tab where we have free projects, more videos, and lots of PDFs for frequently asked questions and troubleshooting that will help you with your projects.